like a theme song. It's whistling. I don't think I should do it for you. Plus, I'm not a very good whistler. But if you didn't know that we have like a jingle for bake-alongs, um, head to the YouTube channel. Um, unfortunately, I don't think YouTube has like youtube.com slash, but if you Google Burr Pastry Shop YouTube, you, all of those videos have the jingle um, by Tribeca Productions. Not Tribeca, Tribeca. Um, yes, but I won't do it for you because I, because I'm, I'm a very bad whistler, but it is terribly cute. Um, and I just, I add it before, before I upload, I add it, um, to all the videos. Uh, so that's actually good fun. If you haven't seen the YouTube channel, go there and open any of the videos. Um, at least I think from week three and on, and you'll hear the little, it's like less than five second jingle beforehand. Um, we're making gooey brownies today. I'm stoked about it. I was ready to do this an hour ago, and at like 12.45, my husband was like, just checking in. It's at 2 o'clock like normal today. And I was like, yeah. Oh, it's not in 15 minutes. I was going to go on at 1 o'clock today on accident. I guess that's how my day is going. Thank goodness this is such an easy, easy recipe. It could not be simpler. Um, so I'm really excited about that. For one, not a lot of dishes. Um, it takes just a little bit of time, but it, honestly, it's not that much. Uh, unless you unless you want it to, which I'll get to, because you can chill these out in the fridge for a few hours before ever cutting in, but I mean, you do you, do whatever you want. Um, you're the master here. It is two layers. Um, I can get into that now. It is two layers, so we've got the brownie portion on the bottom and then the gooey goodness um, on the top, and this is absolutely choose your adventure. The, th the whole thing sort of is. Um, so that's... Uh, um, that'll be fun today and I'm doing something crazy. I cannot <laughs> wait to show you what I'm doing. It's a little insane. What we're going to start by doing is putting our chocolate and our butter into a bowl. And I know this adds a little extra. I'll put that back up. Don't worry. Um, it's like one extra dish, but honestly, I'm using this pot of water to boil pasta later. So, I mean, if you don't know what's for dinner, um, I would set up a Bain Marie, a uh, double boiler, um, to melt together the butter and the chocolate. That's our first step. Now, I'm saying this because if you wanna use the microwave, you're perfectly welcome to do that. Probably don't go over 30 second intervals. Um, I mean, if you wanna take a chance, you can. Uh, so you'll do it every 30 seconds, stir the chocolate in the butter. Um, otherwise, you'll jo join me and we'll just have a double boiler. I have like a few inches of water in this pot and you want a heat proof tempered bowl. Um, that just sits on top. Mine actually is low. Usually I have a bowl that sort of sits up. This is fine though. This will work fine. And we use the steam here. Let me get these out of the way. We use the steam to melt the chocolate, uh, which is nice. And it's simple and it melts slowly. Um, I am just doing regular pasta for dinner tonight. Someone asked what kind of pasta, just regular pasta. It's sort of a surprise. Maybe, maybe I'll, sh maybe I'll send out a picture later. Um, I'll send out, a, I'll, I'm going to put a picture in stories later. It's a little wacky. So get, so get ready, get ready for, um, for that. Um, first off, preheat the oven 350. And we'll do this sort of in steps. We don't have very much waiting time at all. Um, but like, it's good for the chocolate and butter to cool just a little bit before we add in the, um, sorry about, this is my Borough Market apron. If you haven't been to Borough Market in, uh, in England, oh my gosh, you head straight for the cheese toasty booth. You just go straight there. Thank goodness, I think my, my, my brother studied in London for a while. I don't know if he's the one who found it, um, but go to Borough Market when we can and head straight for the cheese toasty booth, seriously. Okay, we'll get started now. Um, so chocolate, four ounces is what I wrote. And I now feel bad because I don't know how many people um, have a kitchen scale. So it's about three quarters of a cup of baking chips. So whatever you want today, I'm using half unsweetened chocolate. I'm using two ounces, so half of a bar of unsweetened chocolate, and I'm using bittersweet because I have it. Um, and two ounces of bittersweet. Those go in your heat-proof bowl along with one stick, four ounces of butter. I don't have unsalted butter today, so I'm omitting the salt. If anyone is with me on that, you can omit the salt too. Very, trust me, this recipe is so easy, even though it is two layers. And put that over bowl, over simmer. Uh, so just maybe medium low if you're really worried it's not going to melt. 
or you're doing the microwave every 30 seconds. Seriously, do whatever is easiest for you. I don't know when I became the type of person that found double boilers easy. Alas, I became the type of person that found double boilers are easier. Um, so just get that chocolate going. Four ounces of each, four ounces of butter, four ounces of chocolate, melt them together. No cocoa powder in this. I did become also the type of person that thinks like the right kind of brownie is melted chocolate, not cocoa powder. Honestly, who cares? So this recipe is good for a square pan or a round pan. Um, you can put it in like a nine by 13 inch. It'll just be really thin. You can also double this recipe and put it in a nine by 13 inch and that works. Um, I'm using, I think this is a nine by nine. I'm pretty sure that's a nine by nine, not an eight by eight. Um, and then grease, if you don't have any parchment, grease the whole thing. If you do have parchment, you don't need to grease over the parchment. I use a little bit to stick and then the sides, some of my sides aren't gonna get um, parchment. And this is because I'm hoping to lift it out. So I just have sides. So we're just getting the pan ready for the brownies. And then we can come back to our chocolate, which will patiently melt together. And while it gets heated, we can get our other ingredients together. You're gonna to need two eggs. And if you want to stir together your salt and your all-purpose flour, which I split, which is not helpful, um, you can do that. I, one of my goals with this recipe is to make it like as dish-free as possible afterwards because some of our recipes have not been that dish-free. Um, but you're welcome to combine the dry ingredients together, whisk them together. You're welcome to put the eggs and vanilla in a bowl together, but you don't have to. I'll leave that up just in case you do. Otherwise, we're just melting together chocolate and butter. This can be a two bowl recipe if you really want it to be. And again, the if you're doing a double boiler with me, if you're not doing the microwave, the water is going to be you need to get it up to a simmer, so I wouldn't start it on simmer. I, maybe this isn't how stovetop works, but I always like to start it higher and then bring it down to a simmer once once I can tell that it's actually heated up. I don't know, though. I'm using electric, especially if you have the gas stove. Just turn that puppy on low. Now I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing. I am... I am making like the sweetest thing possible. We haven't done something super incredibly sweet, maybe cupcakes aside. Um, so I'm doing sort of a play on peanut butter chocolate and I'm incorporating almost every candy I could think of. I forgot to pick up Reese's Pieces, otherwise those would be in here. That's what you need to know. Also, I didn't mention it, but your butter, um, if it is cold, you can cube it to make it easier. You can pull it out of the bowl to cube it um, and make it easier. Um, if not, it will melt. It just might take a little bit more time. My butter was already pretty soft, so I'm having a good time over here. And it's three eggs total. We do need some eggs in our topping. Okay, this is going. And you can really just let this sit. Now that I've got it all incorporated, I'll let this sit. Okay, and I'm coming back. I use two ounces of each type of chocolate. Excellent question. Um, and just in case anyone's just joining, um, we just got these two first ingredients, our chocolate and our butter, in a double boiler. You're welcome to microwave it instead in, in a 30 second intervals. And I use two ounces of unsweetened chocolate and two ounces of bittersweet. Feel free to use, I've used a ton of different chocolates in this recipe. Um, in a pinch I've used milk and that absolutely works. The cocoa content is just a little bit less. Um, Semi-sweet's a great bet. Whatever you have on hand, truly. And then we will get to play with the um, base, the brownie base, and we'll get to play with the topping. So I'm actually planning on incorporating peanut butter chips into my brownie base and then loading the topping. Oh, my oven's ready. And then loading the topping with uh, peanut butter Oreos, <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups, and um, oh, there's, oh, and more peanut butter chips is my plan. And then we can leave some and dot the top. Um, so you're looking at four total ounces of chocolate, regardless of what you're using. And I'll leave that up a little bit longer. Feel free to always take a screenshot. I think that's a great idea. Um, to, or have, um, if you're on Instagram, maybe you can have Facebook up somewhere else and all the ingredients are there. I am working, I have an idea of how to make sure the ingredients are always up, um, but if I'm, working on something and you need to see it, you can still see me. And I do have an idea and I'm hoping to implement that maybe next week, we'll see. 
And if again, if anyone has questions, just holler out. What I'm going to start working on, move this back, um, is chopping my toppings because we have some time while the chocolate is melting. Oh, that's looking really good. Um, so you don't want to, even if you're using pecans and coconut today, um, you don't want to throw in whole pecans. You're welcome to toast them if you want. I actually typically don't in this, but feel free. I have a preference for toasted pecans. Um, but you want everything chopped to some extent. I mean, I want a hunk of peanut butter Oreo in my gooey topping, but uh, probably not a whole Oreo. So by all means, while your chocolate melts, get started on uh, the chopping. And I'll put this back up just for a little bit longer in case anyone else joins us late. Um, and in case anyone did hop on in the last few minutes, uh, we have our chocolate and our butter, those first two ingredients, in a double boiler. My recommendation for the mix-ins is maybe half a cup to a whole cup per, depending on how many you're using. You probably wanna end up with anywhere between two and three cups of total mix-ins. And that doesn't include toppings, so feel free to get a few toppings uh, cut up too, because we want this to look adorable. I didn't think about um, the fact that I, I, sh I feel like I should have peeled these in advance. Would that ruin the, the reality of actually baking together? Don't forget to get your garbage bowls out. You're, you're, really, you're gonna need it for the eggs today. And the can of sweetened condensed milk. Get that garbage bowl out. Is anyone else, did anyone else choose an individually wrapped candy? Oh, all-purpose flour, I beg your pardon, I didn't even realize that. If anyone's wondering about AP flour, all-purpose flour, I'm so sorry. I feel like that's the first time I've messed that up. Um, that's just all-purpose flour. Honestly, if you only have cake flour or bread flour, I, you can go for it and just see how it turns out. Your gluten content is the thing that's going to be different. It'll change the texture. I've never made a brownie with um, a higher gluten fl uh, flour, but I, I mean, it'll be fine. Yes, thank you. Thank you for anyone else. If, if anyone sees a question I miss and they know the answer, absolutely go for it, answer it. Yes, that's all-purpose flour. Sorry about that. I feel like I might have written that on our ingredients list. And don't forget to give your chocolate and butter some tender loving care as it melts. And also don't burn your hand on the side of the bowl. Woohoo! I feel like I should have chopped my... Is there a sports game on right now? No, oh, there's no way. I just heard so. Did you guys... Maybe you heard the screaming. One thing about chocolate chips is they'll melt faster than if you left the squares. Uh, if you have unsweetened chocolate today, again, just two ounces if you're going half and half there. One thing I should have mentioned is you don't want four full ounces of unsweetened chocolate. You can, you can absolutely do that. It's, um, it's gonna be really bitter compared. So just know that before you go for it. Even if your favorite thing on earth is, you know, 85% bittersweet chocolate it's it's a dangerous game but you but you gotta let me know how it turns out I feel like my husband would say no go for all unsweetened chocolate that's how I like it he's a dark chocolate person I don't know I'm a chocolate person why does there have to be a debate there okay give it a little stir and then you can continue letting it sit my butter's basically all done um, and my chips are getting there. Again, I'm using half bittersweet, half unsweetened. I really regret not picking up Reese's Pieces. I can't even tell you, not that this needed more sugar in it. It just feels like the perfect fun topping. It ha it's, you know what I mean? They're colored, they have a, um, it would create a nice sort of, you know, rainbow effect on top, I like that. I'll show you about how much I end up um, using here after I chop my topping. Does, did anyone bring something weird to the table today? I'm curious. Or is anyone going for German chocolate? Because this is essentially very similar to the German chocolate, if you know Burr Pastry Shop products. Um, I only put it out in winter. It's a winter product. Um, I know we're making it like the dead of summer on one. I don't, it's a hot day today here, um, and we're all in our kitchens together. Um, but this is super similar to my German chocolate bars recipe. It's a, because it's a little more choose your adventure, um, it's not exact, but if you brought coconut and pecans, 
Uh, you'll basically be making it. Oh, here we go. You don't want this water to come to a full boil and sit there. It's gonna be a little bit too hot. One thing I'm not good at at all, one thing, just to share one small thing that I'm not good at at all, um, is temper. We learned how to table temper chocolate in culinary school. And honestly, I'm just like, oh, so you melt it and you throw in chips that aren't melted and you stir, like I don't quite, I'm not great at tempering chocolate. I don't really use it though. It's better to work with, but again, don't burn yourself. This is hot. Whoo, I'm almost there, although it is getting a little bit high. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. I just turned down my temperature. It's coming to a boil, and again, we don't want that. So watch, watch out for your chocolate and your butter. I think I'm gonna end up with about two cups of toppings here, which is good. That's absolutely fine, two to three cups, just to be safe. Um, and reserve some for your topping. Let me know if I missed anything. Okay, good, we're, we're good, we're good. There is no, I'm trying to think if you are going to double it, there really isn't anything special you have to do looking through it. You do need two full cans of sweetened condensed milk, which is a lot of sweetened condensed milk. Um, if you don't have sweetened condensed milk, you can actually make it. I have, I have never tried it, um, but it is simple. Sweetened condensed milk is just milk boiled down with sugar in it, basically, until it becomes thick and creamy and delicious and sweet. Um, so don't let the fact that you don't have sweetened condensed milk stop you if you have milk and sugar. It takes a bit of time. That's like, I've tried to, um, if you see steam coming out the side, which maybe you can't see it on my, I have steam, a little too high, turn it down a smidge. And my chocolate is almost melted. Um, what I was about to say is I have, I have this thing in my mind that you should be able to one for one, no matter what, sub in dos de leche for sweetened condensed milk, because they're very similar. If you boil a can of sweetened condensed milk for three hours, Look that up before you just go for that. Um, it turns, you open it up and it's dulce de leche. It's not sweet condensed milk anymore. Um, and if you, dulce de leche is uh, this rich, uh, caramelly, delicious, gosh, sweet, uh, amazing, I don't, I want to call it a sauce. I don't even know what to call it. Um, and it's got this caramel color to it. It's absolutely wonderful. I thought about saying you could bring that to the table today. Um, but every time I've tried one for one subs of that, it just has not worked out the way I really wanted it to at all. Um, but by all means, try it. I feel bad saying that one since I've had failures across the board. And I mean like, um, ooh, there is some sweet condensed milk in our Buna bars, which is a recipe I don't intend on baking along with yet. We'll see. Um, and I have tried, and our toffee bars, and I've tried it just to, you know what I mean? Inventing in the kitchen and just experimenting and, and having a good um, time. I've tried to sub it in on both of those. Uh, and no, not yet. You know, it's not there yet. I wonder what the ratio is of uh, failed to successful kitchen experiments for me. I feel like I am actually very fortunate. Don't forget to turn off your stovetop once your chocolate's melted. Uh, very fortunate in experimentation or I'm not picky well, both of those uh, top secret someone says top secret on the Buna bars maybe a little oh if you only brought half the chocolate um, to the table today I would only recommend making half of the base which is okay it's just gonna be a thinner base that's not a problem I can't think of a sub that I can say would be successful no matter what. I would have the recipe, and I actually think it's gonna turn out fine with a smaller base. You're sort of making like a, um, a brownie crust instead, but it doesn't necessarily have to uh, be cr a crunchy crust or a chewy crust. You could par bake it for half the time. 
and then put the goo on top. So I've, I was trying not to say goo today. I can't even tell you. I was like, Sarah, don't say goo today. Whatever you do, um, don't say goo. I labeled it as gooey goodness to remind myself. Um, but I would just, I would go for it unless you want to wait. I mean, if you, if you want to come back, um, with the full amount of chocolate and make this with a thicker brownie, do that, do that. But having the recipes, I think your only bet if you only brought half the chocolate, I'm so sorry. That's very sad. Um, whisk time for a whisk, no whisk, no, no reward. Uh, we're going to add our sugar in and now it's just super simple. So I said down here, you could seriously choose whatever sugar you want. It actually will not affect it. I'm going to do half granulated and half brown because hello, why the heck not? Uh, and which I feel like is the definition of these brownies. Hello, why the heck not? Gooey brownies. So sugar goes straight in. Um, my chocolate's cold for like two minutes, which is absolutely fine. Seriously, feel free. If you want a uh, deeper flavor, go for brown. Um, if you want, I almost want to say, if you want sort of the chocolate to stand out, go for granulated. Um, but if you want sort of, I'm using peanut butter, so I want um, a richer flavor and a little bit deeper, I'm going for brown sugar. It's got those caramel notes that granulated sugar just can't... Uh, imitate. And so we're just whisking our sugar right in. And next we'll go the eggs. And because this chocolate is hot, uh, I do want you to be careful. <laughs> well, obviously I want you to be careful about your hands and everything, but I was actually going to say, I want you to be careful not to cook your eggs. Um, so I'm going to put one in and show you what I'm going to do. Do them one at a time. Uh, have your garbage bowl ready for the uh, shell. And you want to whisk basically as soon as you get it into the bowl. Because we're working with something hot, you're white, uh, you'll notice it. If it, if it starts uh, moving from translucent to opaque, you'll know that you're cooking your eggs. Um, so we've got one cup of sugar of your choice. Dark brown works great too. And two eggs going in. And then we'll get our vanilla extract in. All right, here comes the vanilla extract, one teaspoon. Vanilla extract is always one of those um, ingredients where you can adjust. If you don't have vanilla, don't worry about it. Oh, if you want to throw in peppermint extract because that's your angle, do it. Sounds a little weird with sweetened condensed milk, but prove me wrong. 100% prove me wrong on that. Um, ooh, like peppermint, why wouldn't that work? Why wouldn't that work, I ask? Like throw in peppermint patties, see what happens there. Ooh, or Seize Candy's peppermint bar for like a crunch. That won't melt quite the same way in the oven. Ooh -hoo -hoo. All right, vanilla's in. I used uh, salted butter because I forgot to get unsalted butter. So I'm not gonna put in the salt, but now is the time to add your three quarters of cup of all-purpose flour, AP flour, and um, your salt. Is the, come on, is this not simple? Is this not the most beautiful recipe? One bowl. Yes, we got out a pot for double boiler, but we're all having pasta tonight for dinner. Am I right? Did I not give you enough warning on that to pick it up? All right, let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. We're good, go on. And we're just whisking our flour in gently. Uh, gently, solely because, um, Hello, potential mess, right here. Uh, a lot of recipes tell you you need to fold in the flour here. We have not aerated this at all. I feel like I just misspoke on that word. Um, we have not put any air into this, so it's okay to not fold your flour in, except for the idea of not wanting to um, overwork your flour. All right, you do wanna get a spatula out to uh, put this in the pan. Guys, we're like halfway there. I can't even believe it. What we're gonna do after we put this in the pan is put it in the oven. And we're gonna par bake it, we're gonna half bake it for about 10 minutes, probably 12. Um, but just in case I wanna stop at 10, I haven't actually made this in this size pan before. And so like, let's take a look. I'll tell you what we're looking for as soon as we have it in the oven. So get your pan, which we already greased and is totally ready for us impatiently waiting for brownie batter and if you have that offset holly i think that's my favorite kitchen tool 
It's got to be. I talk about it all the time. Garbage bowls and offset spatulas. Um, and get every bit of goodness. I mean, yeah, you can... Well, <clears throat> you can eat the batter, um, raw eggs. I just want to... I feel the absolute need to say that. Um, but, like, you also sort of want gooey brownies today. So get all of that goodness in your pan. Spread it evenly. And no, there's no leavening agents. There's nothing like, there typically actually aren't leavening agents in brownies. Um, the fudge brownies that I make, which came runner up this week, uh, those uh, do get beaten, they, they get aerated a little bit. These don't. Oven, 350, 10 minutes. Here we go, and meanwhile, we can make the filling. 10 minutes, we'll check on those guys. I will clear my board out and grab a new one, and uh, we'll get our filling started, which is so easy. Seriously, you guys got to tell me what you're making today. There's no way anyone else is making this insane peanut butter chocolate thing that I've decided to do today. Ah, uh, live a little. You know what I mean? Crazy times. Let's have fun. Do you have a bowl with a spout? Grab it. Um, I just think that makes it easier on the back end. You're never supposed to watch people fish through their disorganized, maybe it's over there. Um, can opener. Go ahead and put your sweet condensed milk right in. And I said one can, that's so bad. It's 14 ounces, I think. 14 ounces, and that's a weight. That's not liquid ounces. Um, if you do have I ended up with a, one of those mega cans recently at work, and um, it's always weighed. Just make sure you, you see if, if, if you're using a large one. Um, you might be able to eyeball it. I feel like this is three quarters of a cup. I have measured cans before of sweet condensed milk and a pinch. Um, so 14 weighed ounces, one can of sweet condensed milk, whatever you've got on hand. If you don't have 14 ounces exactly, it's not a problem. Doesn't matter. This is not, this is especially not an exact science. We're just getting our sweet condensed milk in the bowl. All right, and one egg. Is this not simple? This is so simple. Hello. And I just got a shell in there. And um, vanilla extract right here. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then I think on Instagram, you can't see, and your favorite mix-ins, which I was already prepping earlier. So much vanilla in this recipe. I'm a huge fan. One. Two. I'm probably messing someone up. Oh, I can't. It's like a pet peeve of mine. Someone counting near me when I'm trying to, or even talking, I think, like when I'm trying to count something, like cups or measurements. Like, I'm just baking, in baking. That's, call me a diva. <laughs> Don't count around me when I'm trying to measure things. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry if I messed anyone up on their own paths today. Holy smokes. Oh, this smells wonderful. Okay, here come the mix-ins. And now this is where you do you. I'm actually gonna sort of eyeball it and I might need to cut a few more if I don't like how much is in here. Let me get, oh no, you guys, I forgot to put my peanut butter chips in my base. I never thought I'd whine about a topic like that before, but oh my gosh, I'm upset. I'm gonna go for a quarter of a cup of peanut butter chips in here. You know, they were always gonna be in here too. And um, I'm gonna start eyeballing it. These are my Reese's, my mini Reese's peanut butter cups and my peanut butter Oreos. Oh gosh, the sugar today. Seriously, we haven't done something like this before. This feels like a mix between, again, if you know Burr product, between loaded cookie bars and German chocolate cake bars. That's what it, that's what it feels like. I absolutely am going to need more Reese's cups. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how thick mine is. This is probably perfect because you want it you still want to be able to stir it and you want it to give, but you also want it to be absolutely loaded. I mean, that's sort of the point of this. Oh yes, I can absolutely recap the steps. No problem. Never apologize for that. 
Um, and we've got six more minutes on our oven, so let's absolutely do it. I'm gonna put the recipe back up and I'm gonna recap it. So if you're just joining us today, um, the chocolate and the butter go into a double boiler or the microwave, whatever you're doing, and it, they'll just be melted together. That's sort of the goal. The next step is adding in the sugar, uh, whatever type you want. You can go half and half brown sugar granulated, uh, which is what I did today. You can go all of one or the other, um, or the other, beg your pardon. Whisk it in, then you're gonna whisk in the eggs very carefully one at a time, whisk in the vanilla extract. If you put the salt in where I've got it here um, in order, that's absolutely fine. You're gonna finish off with all purpose flour. All of that gets whisked together, and then if you're not going to forget to put your peanut butter chips in your base, which is what I did, um, throw whatever mix-ins you want, spread it in your pan, and we're gonna bake it for 10 minutes. And now, we're just basically throwing together the last ingredients of the gooey goodness, not the goo, the gooey goodness, um, and just stirring those together. And then all of it will bake together, and it'll bake for long enough where we won't be able to finish together, I bet. Um, but uh, once again, I will absolutely share this creation with you. Um, so those are the basic steps. If I move too fast even through that, just let me know. Not a problem. What I'm doing now is getting the toppings ready because I absolutely did not um, cut up enough mix-ins. Because it needs, it needs to also look as delicious as it's going to be. For the consistency check, this isn't the prettiest thing. So I don't want you to expect this to be the prettiest thing. Um, it's sort of, see that? So it stirs and it moves, but it's still absolutely sweet condensed milk. And that's what we're looking for. So just a few more mix-ins I'm gonna um, chop up for aesthetics on top. If you did see the photo I posted um, of German chocolate cake bars today, because that's sort of the inspiration for the gooey brownies, um, that's a good indication of what it'll look like if, you know what I mean, because we're going to be at different speeds. Our ovens are at different speeds and all of that. Speaking of our ovens being at different speeds, four more minutes and I want to tell you what this should look like. You can't, you can't really go wrong, but there is a sweet spot here. You want it to be set enough so that when you pour your uh, gooey goodness on top, it doesn't immediately sink through the brownie then we won't have layers. Um, but you don't want it to be so cooked that it's overcooked on the back end. So there is a sweet spot here, and I'm telling you it's about 10 minutes, and I'm, I'm gonna check how it's doing. Um, so it'll still be wet, it shouldn't look cooked. Uh, there's no need to stick a, um, a toothpick, hello, uh, in it to check. It should be wet, it should come out wet. Um, all you're looking for is that it's getting it's becoming set. It's on its way to being set, but it's not quite there. Because you really don't want, uh, just for the sake of having this delicious topping, you don't want an overcooked brownie in the bottom. It's not a crust. Once again, I would call it a bottom layer. Um, but if you only have half the chocolate and you are going to make it more of a crust, have at it. Nothing wrong with that. I actually have, I feel like I shouldn't even say this. I have two new products I'm, I'm stoked about. Um, I'm just excited about everything all the time. Um, that I think I'm releasing with the summer items, I don't know, but it's, it's got a bottom layer, similar to this one. They both do. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to tell you right now, I'm not going to. I can't. I can't. But if you're not on the email subscription, seriously, I don't send one out unless there's actually something to say. Um, I try and always send out the, uh, new items there first, uh, before I ever post them on social media. So do it. Plus, I try and give inf good information there, too. All right. I almost feel bad we're, that we're doing an oven work today when it is rather hot out. Okay, oh my gosh, my garbage bowl's so full today, I'm emptying it. See, but isn't that the beauty of having a bowl with all your garbage in it? You can take the whole thing. Huh, you guys are so cute. Join this, seriously subscribe to the email list and I, you, you get first peeks at everything. It's like free and I just don't bother you. I try not to bother you and you can always unsubscribe if you feel bothered by me. Um, two more minutes, I think I will check them. I am smelling a lot of chocolate, which is a great sign, but um, I wanna make sure they're not overcooked since I haven't done this size. Have I ever done it in this oven, I wonder? All right, let's see, ooh. 
I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go those 12 minutes. Something in my head said, it's gonna be 12 minutes is a sweet spot. It is setting around the sides, which is perfect. Um, so I'm setting it for two more minutes and then I'll pull it. Um, but there's so much wetness in the center that I'm thinking just a little longer to make sure this doesn't bust right through. And if it does bust right through, there was, you know what I mean? That's absolutely fine. Um, as we layer it on, we're gonna try and do it as evenly as possible to not disturb the brownie base. If you do just pour it right in the center, it's a, it'll sink through and then the brownie base will actually spread. And so you'll end up with these pieces on the edges with like vertically half brownie base, half filling. And we're looking for the horizontal. I mean, you could do this. If you really like brownie and you really like this filling, you could do that and then you'd get, if any, really thin layer in the middle and then this half and half. Um, vertically on the sides, or I guess horizontally, I don't know. Um, sorry, make sure, if anyone has questions, let me know. I always uh, talk your ears off, but I love, I love baking, so. So I got into the right profession. Um, speaking of summer, the subscription boxes go out, uh, not this week, but next week, and the cutoff for signing up to receive next month box is Tuesday. So if there's anyone else who wanted to join, I was so excited to see the number of people that joined this past month in anticipation of next month's box. Um, and it is the seasonal box. So those go out four times a year and June is one of those months. It will be the summer box. I already know two box exclusive items that, that are, will be going in that. Um, we've got a few boxes shipping, which I'm, st I'm just stoked about. Um, so absolutely, if you want to try a variety and never want to, it's hard to order a variety, especially now that we're not at um, farmer's markets. But if you want a variety and you want stuff you haven't tried and you're that type of adventurous, sign up. Go to the site. I think it's under the pastry shop. You'll find subscription boxes. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. You can pick small or large. Um, you can pick, if you want to uh, try savory, you can pick uh, surprise me or sweet and savory. So it's very fun. I'm uh, really excited. Um, 350, yes, oven's at 350. Sorry, I'm just talking your ears off again. Okay, so see how wet this is? But it's setting. So that's what we're looking for. I'm not sure if you can really see around the edges um, that it's turning from shiny. Uh, to hello more matte. I don't think that's a baking term. Matte is a baking term. So it is ready to go and get your oat trivet hello out and we're going to ease this into the bowl. Get another offset ready right at your side and I actually like to spoon the first few bits just to test the waters. It's going perfectly and then I'll cover the top and, and spread it and make sure it's um, even, you do want this to be even. I feel like this is not the most attractive thing to be looking at, but 100% worth it. Don't let this throw you off. I mean, sweet condensed milk is not good to look at, but if, if there were, I don't know what a world would be without Vietnamese iced coffees, so. Sweet condensed milk is, is perfect exactly the way it is. Okay, now that I've got an even layer, I'm going to pour the rest out and I'm gonna continuously move my bowl to try and disturb the brownie as little as possible. I want you to know that no matter what you do, your, your edges are going to be of brownie. They're going to be a little higher than the rest. What you're sort of creating is an, an I was gonna say an edge. What I'm, it's like a, uh, like a pie crust. You know what I mean? It's going to go up the walls a little bit. It's going to go off the walls a little bit. All right. Isn't this recipe so easy? I mean, you could set that chocolate if you have a really low burner. You could set that chocolate out onto the, um, the bain marie the double boiler and like let it sit there and bake this over a time a long time okay oh my gosh this is so loaded with stuff i can't even tell you and now that's even and i'm going to do some toppings because i want this to be fun and your toppings will sink in a little bit it's expected don't freak out when your toppings sink in so loaded cookie bars uh have this i can't this reminded me so much of it um and I wanted Reese's Pieces. I was making a German chocolate cake morphed with loaded cookie bars. Um, Oreos, Reese's peanut butter cups, and uh, M&M's on top of this amazing brown sugar 
uh, basically cookie dough base. Some people will look at it and say, oh, so the kids like that. Oh, trust me, the adults like that too. I am one of them. It's very eye-catching to have that type of color. See, I wanted that type of color. I am going to throw some um, peanut butter chips on top. These will probably sink in more. Oh, that's very fun. It does, this reminds me of sort of a winter, a winter product. Okay, guys, into the oven. Into the oven, and uh, I'll explain what we're looking for before I ever sign off, because it will set. But before that, hello you. There we go. Okay, 350 right in, and this is going to take anywhere from probably 20 to 25 minutes. Um, the filling, the gooey uh, goodness will set, um, and it will turn, because it's milk and sugar and it's caramelizing and all that stuff, it will turn a little bit uh, yellow and orange, which is normal. Don't, don't freak out at all. Um, I would turn it halfway through. So set your timers for probably 12 minutes again is safe. Turn it halfway through. You can also sort of inspect it. If you're like, this looks like it's over halfway through, set your timer for a lesser amount. This oven does not cook that quickly. So I'm gonna go for about 25 minutes, checking halfway through at uh, the 12 minute mark. Um, and here's the patience portion. If you want these to be really even straight cuts, uh, the key to that is resting them for two hours, I know. So after it's cooled on the counter, wrap it in plastic wrap, throw it into the refrigerator and let it sit for about two hours. Then if you're using parchment or if you're just using a spatula, um, that's when you wanna get it out of the pan. I don't even know if I'm doing that. Maybe I'll like halfway do it. <laughs> Feels like my nature. Um, I'll like pull it out, let it cool, throw it in the fridge for as long as I can and then pull it out once it feels like it's time for dessert. Um, so what you're looking for is for the sweetened condensed milk to set. If it looks shiny, if it's wobbling, it's not done. Um, and it, it texturally, I don't think that'll be incredibly pleasant. Um, but otherwise, holler at me with any questions. I will sign off because we're just, you know, putting in the oven now. Um, but I will come out with either a video. I realized the video I filmed last week was two minutes. I thought it was one minute. And so you only got half of me unmolding the quiche. Sorry about that. Um, if I can keep my video under one minute, I'll post it. If not, I'll absolutely post pictures. Um, I can show you the cut. Maybe I will cut at least part of it out uh, while it hasn't set at all, but we'll see. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can DM me. You can use the contact page on the website, burrpastryshop.com. If you want to know what I'm talking about visually, go to the pastry shop. Uh, go to local delivery and find the loaded cookie bars and the, uh, you won't see German chocolate cake, but you can see that on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and you'll know exactly what I'm making today. This like sugar, this is the first sugar bomb of Burr Bake Alongs. Um, so I'm, I'm happy, I'm really happy to do it because sometimes that's what you want and that's what you need. Um, and if you, so if you have any questions, DM me on Facebook or Instagram or email info at burrpastryshop.com. Um, otherwise, thanks for baking along and look, we don't have that many dishes to do which is really nice and we'll all come out with this out of this with something sweet um in the meantime stay connected guys i just thought of this new hashtag that i'm really upset i didn't think of sooner um i'm not very good at it though but the perfect bite use that hashtag if you're baking along today i just think it's absolutely adorable thank you have a good memorial day to everyone else too i hope at least some of you aren't working on monday um and you can use you know well that's tomorrow i was gonna say use this weekend it's sunday afternoon just like relax and refresh and replenish tomorrow um but stay connected i'll see you guys next week uh check instagram for the polls i have an idea so we'll see bye an update from Bake Along today. I just want to show you what mine looks like. I should probably shake it so you can see that it's set. So it is set and you can see that it's turned a little bit orange around the edges and that's a sweetened condensed milk. See, that's perfect. And now I'm going to let it cool and I think I will throw it into the fridge for maybe an hour before pulling it out and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Oh my gosh, is this decadent or what?